what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Praise the Lord to everybody this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord to everybody. Hallelujah. Truly, we thank God for another day that he has allowed us to see it, for another chance and opportunity he has given us to assemble ourselves together. Because we know that truly without him we cannot make it. Without him we would be lost. For the Bible tells us that it is in him we live, we move, and we have our beings in Jesus' name. So we thank God for our here being. We thank God for you coming out this morning that we may assemble, that we may give God what is due unto him. But truly, God deserves all the praise. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the worship that we can give him in Jesus' name. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Where would we be in Jesus' name? We know we don't always make the right choice. We don't always do that which is right. Sometimes we come short of the glory of God, but we thank God that he came, he died, and he rose again the third day, that we may have life and that we may have life more abundantly in Jesus' name. We give him the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. We give honor this morning to our pastor, District Ever Fred Martin Jr. in Jesus' name. This after to Lady Sharon Martin, to in Jesus' name, to Ella Jefferson, to Lady Jefferson, to Mother Nicholson in Jesus' name, Mother Martin Hap, to all the men and women of God that are here, and those that are on the way in Jesus' name, and those that are preparing to go to morning worship somewhere this morning in Jesus' name. To God be the glory for the things he has done in Jesus' name. I'm really glad you're there this morning. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord in Jesus' name. But this time, we're going to call to worship. I want to worship in Jesus' name. We ask all of those that can stand, stand as we call to worship in Jesus' name. We have our opening selection. Let us say, clap, and give God the praise.
Jesus. The song says, Satan will have to flee in Jesus' name. Tell me who can stand against us when we call on his great name. And his name is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. There's none like him in Jesus' name. We thank God this morning for that open selection in Jesus' name. Because we know in him we can do all things in Jesus' name. We can do all things in Christ which strengthens us in Jesus' name. We thank God in Jesus' name. As we prepare to go before the Lord in prayer, we ask you to remember one another as we uh, approach the throne of grace and God will continue to have his way in each and every one of our lives in Jesus' name. We want God to do some things in our lives that others may say, look what the Lord has done in Jesus' name. Not that we may get any glory or get pats on the back, but we want to make sure that everything that we do, that God get the glory out of it in Jesus' name. So we ask you to pray one for another. Pray for the morning worship uh, services that are going on throughout this entire land. Those that are calling on God in Jesus' name. God, not only do we pray here, but other people are praying in other places and they want God to hear them as well in Jesus' name. Pray that God will be done in their lives as well in Jesus' name. We have here on our prayer list names and family and groups that we request for us to pray for them as well in Jesus' name. We ask you to pray for the Tabin family in Jesus' name. We are Mother Mary Tabin in Jesus' name. She is going on in Jesus' name. She passed over the week and we pray that God will comfort the family heart. They just lost their father not too long ago in Jesus' name. And now the mother is going on. So pray that God will comfort that family heart and give them the comfort that they need in Jesus' name. And the, and the thing, the most important thing that, that 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 helps you along the way, that family knew who God was, Amen. knew who God is, knew what God can do in Jesus' name. So that's the most important thing in Jesus' name. Pray for the Tabor family. Pray for in Jesus' name, Donna Gallup Jr., which is the son of Pastor Gallup, who's here with us this morning. We thank Amen. God for her and Sister Gibson back in the sanctuary in Jesus' name. And she had a a beautiful, uh, miraculous praise report for her son. But you know what? We, you know what our prayer is now? We, we know God can heal. We know God can put back together again. We know God can do all these miracles. We want to, we know we want to pray for that. Pray that God will send that miracle through these doors. So we can see what God has done in Jesus. Not that they have to prove anything to us, but we know God is an awesome God. But man, wouldn't you like to see it sometimes? Wouldn't you like to just your eyes behold it? And we believe God going to do just that. Pray for Sister Rivetta Crockett. Continue to pray for the Mitchell family as they go through that time of, of grievance in Jesus' name. Pray for the Grover family, which is where Pastor Martin and Lady Sharon Martin is down in Florida at uh, Apostle Grover home going service. Pray that God will comfort that family heart in Jesus' name. I believe in that family, they had like three people to die within a week's time, I believe it was. Three people to die in that immediate family within a few days apart in Jesus' name. Four days? Four days apart. Four days. Now we get one that we like, we can't hardly hold ourselves Amen. together. Amen. Three people in four days to pass in that family in Jesus. Pray for the Rover family. Pray for Sister Rosa Martin. Pray for Howard Lynch. Pray for Deborah Williams, Marquise McLeon, Tyrone Eaton, Jason Field, Connie Palmer, Cashmere Gibson. Pray for the victim of the gun violence in Raleigh. The victims of the hurricane, our nation, the country of Ukraine, our communities, and pray for the peace of Israel in Jesus' name. That God will continue to do in Jesus' name what he do best, and that is everything. As always, we want to remember our seniors. Remember Mother Mamie Martin. Remember Mother Margaret Nicholson, who's with this morning in Jesus' name. We thank God for that. Elder and Mother Whitley. Brother and Mother Richardson, Minister Albert and Mother Sarah Stallings, in Jesus' name. Remember our seniors. And here at Refuge, we always want to remind you, we hear our motto here that we want to always, always stay Christ-centered, family-focused, and community-conscious, in Jesus' name. We will have our prayer song, and we will go for the Lord in prayer.
together lovely. We come to you, Lord, this morning with humble hearts and humble minds, and we thank you once again for day that you have, this day that you have allowed us to see. Thank you for our, this chance and this opportunity. You have given us the mind to assemble ourselves together, Lord. We come not, Lord, just out of routine. We don't come just to be seen, but we come to lift up your holy name. We come to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come to say that you are our God. You are our peace. You are the one that made us. You're the one that created us. You're the one that gives us all that we have, Lord. You give us the activities of our limb. You kept our minds, Lord. You clothed us, Lord. You gave us food to eat, Lord. We just want to say, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you right now, Lord. You have been a shield of protection, Lord. Oh, the enemy, he's out like a royal lion. He's seeking whom he may devour. But, Lord, we thank you for your protection this morning, Lord. We thank you for, Lord, how you watched over as we sleep through the night, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you how you watch over our families as they go through the things they go through, Lord. We just want to say, Lord, to you be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Without you, we cannot make it. We ask you right now, Lord, to go right now from heart to heart right now. Touch each and every one that is here under the sound of my voice, Lord. Those, Lord, that are not here and on the way, and if they're not coming here, Lord, if they're going somewhere to give you the glory, to give you the honor, we ask you to touch them right now, Lord. Protect them as they travel over the highways, Lord. As they get to their destination, Lord, and they get in, give them a word that is from on high right now, Lord. Let your word find a place in our hearts that we might not sin against thee right now, Lord. Have your righteous way. Let your will be done. Bless your people right now, Lord, here and all over the land, Lord. The name that we have called out here, Lord, locally, Lord, in Jesus' name, that is on our prayer list, Lord, in Jesus' name, we see what you have done. We hear about what you have done, Lord, and we know, Lord, that you able to do a season and abundance of all that we can ask or can think right now, Lord. Continue to have your righteous way. Touch every name that we called out this morning on this prayer list, Lord. Touch every country, Lord. Touch every community, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. Let somebody stand up in every community and be that light of that community, Lord, that they may see you, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. They may come crying, men and brethren, what must I do to be saved, Lord? Touch, Lord, those that are going through that time of bereavement right now, Lord. Comfort the heart of your people right now, Lord. Let them know that you sit high, you look low, and you are in control of all things. Lord, help them right now as they go through that time of grieving, 
help them right now, Lord. See them through right now like only you can, Lord. Bless right now for your name's sake and for your glory. Look on our elderly, Lord. Touch them right now. Give them this day their daily bread, Lord. Touch right now. Heal right now, Lord. We ask you right now as we prepare to bring forth your word. Lord, let your word come forth with the power that you intended for to come forth right now, Lord. Open up the hearts of your people right now, Lord, that we may receive what it is that the Spirit has to say to the church. We ask you right now to have your righteous way. Let your will be done. Look on everyone that is calling on you out of a pure heart this morning, Lord. Bless them right now, Lord. Help them to seek your face while you may be found. And Lord, help them, Lord, right now, Lord. Help them right now, Lord. Let them, Lord, not forget where their help comes from. Because we know that all our help coming from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. We thank you right now. To you be glory, majesty, and dominion and power. Bless right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Tracy Taylor and Jesus name. Scripture today will be coming from Psalms 116. Again, when it is uh, Psalms 116, when all those that have it say amen. amen. And uh, we have it to our monitors, to my left and to my right. If y'all read it, read it along, I will uh, start. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. The sorrows of death come past me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow, then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserves his son, I was born low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from fall. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe in the Lord, I will greatly afflict 
I say it in my haste, all men are liars. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I will offer to thee sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. As I'll read the last verse together. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. We do thank God for the reading of Psalms 116. Psalms 116 in Jesus' name. At this time, we're going to go to our announcements. We're going to have our announcements read this morning by Sister Taylor. Let's greet her with a hearty amen. amen. Good morning and praise the Lord. Good morning. If my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn there from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land second chronicles 7 and 14. order take note of our order of services if you would like to participate in our bible study please email your information to us by 6 p.m on monday so that you can send so we can send you an invitation to join the class. Our email address is trclilton at gmail.com. Additional announcement. God has impressed on the heart of our pastor that we should return to the sanctuary in prayer. Each Wednesday night, you are invited to come into the house of the Lord to pray and for Bible study. Those that wish to, those that wish to, can continue to join us by the way of Zoom or conference call. Service will begin nightly at 7 p.m. Our conference call number is 667-770-1280, code 374991. Save these dates. We will be ending the year in revival. Our first revival will be held on Wednesday, November 30th through, when, through Friday, December 2nd. Elder David Boone, pastor of Cornerstone Church in Petersburg, Virginia, will be guest speaker. Service will be nightly at 7.30. Our second revival will be Thursday, December 29th through Friday, December 31st. Elder Quentin Moyer, pastor of Azusa, Church in Roxborough, North Carolina will be guest speaker. We will, we will have our annual watch night service at 10 p.m., followed by morning worship service and Holy Communion. The night will communicate with a breakfast buffet for all. What a way to end 2022. We will indeed finish strong. Thought for the day. To change and to improve are two different things. Okay, we'd like to turn the rest of the service over to Minister Nicholson. We thank Sister Taylor for our announcements in Jesus' name. We ask you to add each of your program. If you don't have a program, get your program before you leave so you can see the order of our services and all of the additional announcements that we have forthcoming in Jesus' name. Our two revivals that we're going to have towards the end of this year in Jesus name one starting the end of this month of November in Jesus name to so remember those two dates in Jesus name uh, November the 30th through December the 2nd the first revival at the end of the month of November remember that and just keep your announcements in mind just like to say on that uh, for the Wednesday night prayer and Bible study on Wednesday night that uh, 
Pastor Martin is in Indianapolis as well as now, but you know, we're gonna be back in the sanctuary, so we need to adjust, we might have to adjust our schedules a little bit, adjust our schedules a little bit, and we so comfortable with being able to get home just in time to type in on the Zoom or the other thing, well, adjust your schedule a little bit. I gotta adjust mine a little bit, because you know, sometimes God see that we don't got too comfortable, but he shake us a little bit. So we're gonna have to adjust ourselves, and we're gonna, but, and the Bible says to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. And it's very good that when we join in, we're still assembling when we join in on the Zooms and all that. But come into his house. Come into his house. And we just, I just want to just remind you, we might have to just adjust our schedule a little bit in Jesus' name. So, yes. One direction. Right. Right. Okay. In December, the December revival is Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, going into the New Year, which is watch night service in Jesus' name. So Thursday, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Miracle Temple. And our announcements as well, what Sister Dallin was saying for those that didn't hear it now, next weekend would be, uh, we normally have our semi-annual Diocese State Convention in November and in April, but by it being the COVID thing kind of put that off. So, but they're gonna have a one day Diocese meeting, which will be next Saturday in Jesus' name. So for those, those that, that would like to or are planning to do it, to go, it'll be at the Miracle Temple Church there in Durham, North Carolina. So if you can go and you can join in with with uh, the people of God that is all over the state in Jesus' name, from different parts of the state of North Carolina in Jesus' name. So that will be at the Miracle Temple in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, Elder District Elder Whitty is the pastor, the host pastor in Jesus' name. So with that been said, with all of that in mind, govern yourself accordingly. And at this time, we're going to go to our offering, and we're going to bring our tithes and our offerings in Jesus' name to the storehouse, and we're going to, in Jesus' name, bring it ass unto the Lord. And we know that God loves a cheerful giver. So as you prepare to gather your offering and your tithes and your offering, that purpose in your heart what you're going to give, and we know that God will bless you real good in Jesus' name. Because we know we give God. God gave us the most important thing that he had. He gave us his only begotten son in Jesus' name. He said, whosoever will, he said, you can come. You come and he will give you life and he will give your life more abundantly in Jesus' name. So God gave, he wants us to do the same thing in Jesus' name. If you give unto the Lord, he will give you more to give. That is a song that we sing and, and you know, sometimes we sing songs and just to sing, but you know, but when you put in, as we talked this morning, I said this, but you put in you put wisdom, some of the wise words and say it here and put them into action. Watch how God do what he do in Jesus' name. God is able to do anything but fail in Jesus' name. So at this time, we ask you to have your time and all to stand as we prepare to bring them in in Jesus' name. Joe, would you mind coming? Gracious God, we thank you once again for another day, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for our coming together, assembled under this roof, Lord, that we may give you what is due unto you, for truly you are deserving of all the praise, Lord. We ask you right now, Lord, as we prepare to bring our gifts unto you, our tithes and our offering, we ask you right now to touch every hand, Lord, everyone that purpose in their heart to give this morning. Bless them right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, let them know, Lord, that they are not giving in vain, Lord. Let them know, Lord, that what they're giving to, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, this is holy ground, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, you're able, Lord, to give them the things that they need, Lord. We ask you right now to have your way in each and every one of our lives. Lord, touch us where we're weak, Lord. Build us up that we may be strong in you, Lord. Help us in all our ways to acknowledge you, but we truly need directions from you right now. Bless everyone that have to give and those that have not to give. To you be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
We ask you to turn and bring in your tithe and your offering in Jesus' name. to me in Jesus name once again we'd like to say good morning to each of you that is here in the congregation in Jesus name and for those that are joining us via Facebook live in Jesus name we thank God for you being here with us this morning as we prepare to go into the word of God we just want to thank you for just your 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 just the thought of you just and I stop by here and just to see what it is that the spirit has to say to the church this morning in Jesus name we thank God for our opportunity to stand here before you this morning in Jesus name as our pastor is off down in Florida in Jesus name Jacksonville I believe it is and off at the home going service of Apostle Groover in Jesus name we pray that God will protect them and shield and cover them as they make their way back to North Carolina in Jesus name pray that God will cover them and as well as the family as they go through their time of bereavement in Jesus name that God will give them what they need to suffice them for this day and going forth in Jesus' name. So as we prepare to go into the word of God, we ask you for those that have your Bible to turn with us to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 23 through 27. That's Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 through 27 in Jesus' name. And as you find it, you can stand with us. And those that don't have the Bible and would like to join with us in following along, you can see it via our monitors to my left and the right here in the sanctuary. That's Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23 through 27 in Jesus' name. We have it, say amen. And it reads, verse beginning with verse 23, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left 
Remove thy foot from evil. Remove thy foot from evil. And this morning we thank God for reading of Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23 through 27. We would like to leave a thought in your mind and in your heart this morning. Protect your heart. Protect your heart in Jesus' name. Gracious God, we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. As we prepare to bring forth thy word, we ask you right now to lead us and to guide us. Lord, use us as a vessel, Lord, that you may get the glory this morning. Lord, help us to lean not upon our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge you. And you said you will direct our path. Bless your people right now, Lord. Touch the heart and mind of your people, Lord. They may receive your word this morning. Hear and via the social media right now. Have your righteous way and let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated at this time in Jesus' name. Protect your heart. Protect your heart. As we look into the word of God, looking into what we should bring forth in Jesus' name, and we just look in and study and look into the word of God, and we found ourselves stuck in Proverbs in Jesus' name. Proverbs is a book of wisdom in Jesus' name that most most uh, scholars believe that Solomon is the writer of most of the books here in, in uh, Proverbs in Jesus' name. A wise man. And the Bible says Solomon was one of the wisest men that ever lived in Jesus' name because he asked God for stuff. God asked him, to Solomon, what do you want me to give unto you in Jesus' name? And Solomon asked for wisdom that he may lead God people because he said, for myself, Lord, I don't even know whether when I go out, whether I'm going to the left or going to the right. So I need your assistance. I need your help. I need your guidance that I may lead your people. Give me the wisdom to lead your people. And God blessed them with wisdom. And not only he blessed them with wisdom, but he blessed them with a whole lot more even coming after that in Jesus' name. So it tells me that if we ask God for the right thing, God is able to do as we say, a seed and linen, abundant, but all that we can ask the thing. If we ask in his will, we do the things that please him, God is able to give us everything that we need and then some in Jesus' name. Where he said, we acknowledge him in all our ways. He said, I direct your path. I make sure you have what you need, the time you need it, the exact thing that you need in Jesus' name. And if you, if you do right, he's I even give you this right here. Allow this to come your way. But that's the kind of God that we serve. So if we look into the word of God here in Proverbs, we see that the writer here is saying, keep your heart with all diligence. And we look at and we see keep. When you keep something, something to make sure that it doesn't get away and that it is safe from attack. Make sure that it don't get away. When we keep something for keep's sake, we say, I'm going to hold on to this right here. I can't let this go. We got to make sure we put it in somewhere that we got to go back and get to it. We got to make sure that everybody don't have access to it. Everybody can't put their hands on it, but we keep it in a place that only we can get to to say, this is what, if I don't give authorization, then you can't have this or you can't touch this or you can't have possession of this in Jesus' name. So if we look here, the Bible tells us, the writer here says, keep your heart, keep your heart. We got to protect the heart. When you protect the heart, when you protect something, you put a guard up around it. You make sure that, like I said earlier, don't, you don't let everything and anything get to it, but you put a guard up. We look in the Bible, we see even Job himself, that Satan told God, the only reason why Job won't turn against you because you have a hedge about him. You have a protection about him. That's why I can't get to him because you are protecting him. You are keeping him. You're watching over him. I can't get to him like that. So they tell you, when we get the right protection, you don't have to worry about what may happen, what can happen, what will happen, whatever situation may be. But if you protect something, you keep it from safe, you keep it from harm, you keep it from danger. If you protect it good enough, it's hard for anything to get into it, to sabotage it, to break it up, or to destroy it or to get it out of place in Jesus' name. So the writer here, the Solomon saying, protect your heart, protect your heart. Make sure you have some safekeeping around about it. But if you don't protect your heart, your heart can be a very, 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 very easily broken or it can be easily very persuaded. It can be easily very unforgiving, but you gotta Protect your heart. You can't just let everything get to your heart. You can't let circumstances of life break you down, that it, that it, that it affects 
your actions, affect the way you talk, affect the way you live, affect the way you give, affect the way you do anything in life in Jesus' name. And the Christian, and the Christ, and Christianity says also we have to be diligent about it, protecting the heart. That means I got to be faithful. I got to be on point. I got to make sure that I'm doing all that I can do to protect the heart. It's a diligence. When we look at diligence, diligence is the effort to do one's part while keeping faith and reliance on God. I'm doing all that I can do, but the most important thing that I know, I got to keep my eyes to the hills. I got to keep looking up. I got to know where my help comes from. And I know I can do all that I can do, but I got to make sure that if I'm going to keep myself and I'm going to keep my heart from being all torn off to pieces, I got to make sure I keep my eye on the one who is the creator of the heart. I got to make sure I keep my eyes and my mind and my thoughts on the one that can control the heart. When Israel was out and they were doing all the things against God, making all the decisions, they wanted them a king, they wanted this, they wanted that, they wanted to be like all the other people. The Bible tells us that they started doing things, they they let their guards down. They started watching about what everybody else was doing. They said, we want one of them. Can I have that? Can we do that? Why can't we be like them? Why can't we have that? They started doing all these things. And as they started doing it, they started letting their protection down. They started to want to be like the surrounding countries, the, the surrounding cities, the surrounding towns, the surrounding neighborhoods. They wanted to fit in. They said, they got one. Why can't we have one? But they started to let their guard down. Their protection started to break down and they started putting their trust in their own selves. They stopped looking for the help that they knew that they could get true and righteous help from. But they started depending on what I can do, what we can do. If we come together, we can do this, we can do that. They went so far that when they were out in the wilderness, they said, we don't care about what Moses is doing up there. We can do it on our own. God don't only just talk to Moses, but he talked to us as well. They started doing all these type of things, and they started to let their protection down. They started to let their guard down. They started to they let down the thing that kept them the most. They forgot about God. Because the Bible said they started doing what was right in their own eyes and in their own heart, in Jesus' name. But one thing about the people of God, we got to realize, that the only way that we can protect our heart, we have to look to the one that was a heart keeper, who was a mind regulator, and he's able to do that which you ask him to do. If you want to be kept, God will and can keep you in Jesus' name. But as I looked into the study of the heart, and I'm no, uh, what's the word, autonomous, that, that I don't study the anatomy and anatomist, I don't, I don't know all about the study of the, of the I'm not a, a physiologist. I don't study the body, but I just look into how the heart works just a little bit. Let me, let me just share a few things with you. It's, it's amazing how when God created us, how he created us. It's amazing how he take the natural thing and can show you spiritual things, how they work, how you should be putting them into place in Jesus' name. Listen to the parts of the heart. The heart the parts of the heart are like the part of a house. How many people here live in a house? It's like the part of a house. Parts of your heart are like parts of your house. Your heart has walls. Your heart has walls. Your heart walls are muscles that contract. They squeeze and they relax to send blood throughout your body. A layer of muscular tissue called the septum divide your heart walls into the left and the right side. Then it says your heart have chambers which can be related to rooms. Your heart is divided into four chambers. You had walls and you got chambers. They can be related to rooms. You have two chambers on the top and two chambers on the bottom. One on each side of the heart. You have rooms. It's almost like a four-bedroom house. Ain't that something? Amen. Your heart has like a four-bedroom house. It has two chambers on the top, two chambers on the bottom. But look, then this is the part that got me. This is the part that really interested me. It has valves. Your heart has valves. That can equate the doors. Each one of them chambers, 
your two upstairs bedrooms and your two downstairs bedrooms. We have doors on them, right? The doors, your heart valve are like doors between your heart chambers. They open and close to allow the blood to flow through. Listen to all the things that your heart do. It allowed them doors. We gotta be careful. That's why the door, we gotta be careful, careful what we let into our hearts. You can't enter, you know, you hear the old saying from people that I can't let you have that part of my heart. I gotta keep that door right there closed. You can't get into that part. I got to keep that closed. If you go there, you might affect something. But it says your heart also have blood vessels. And that relates to what I'm in, your plumbing. Blood vessels. Your heart pump blood through three types of blood vessels. Three types of blood vessels. Your heart, your heart also have um, uh, electrical conduction system can be equated to electricity. Your heart conduction system is like electrical wiring of a house. It controls the rhythm and the pace of your heart. That's just like these, these outlets on the side of the wall and these lights. All we have to do is just flip that switch and the power, the, the electricity goes through there and the lights come on. That's why we gotta be careful to protect the heart. You know, the old, another old saying, the, if you flip that switch in my heart, I'll let you know just how I feel, right? So it's right there. The Bible tells us Christ is near you right now. We can equate that. We can look at that and say, you know what? He is near us right He said, I'm near you even in your mouth. He's right there. He is the electrical part of your heart, of your, of your heart. He want to just, all you got to do is just open your mouth. He said, I come right in. I'm right there. The power is already right there. All you got to do is open up and he will come out. He will come out. He will show you how strong he is. But the heart is a thing. The heart is very important. The heart operates a lot of things throughout our body. It's seeing us. It has the walls. It has the chambers. It has the valves, the blood vessels. It has all these things going on. The heart is very important. It controls your emotions. It's sending out directions. It's sending out all these type of things that you can do. The heart be working. The heart be working. Sometimes we overwork the heart. Sometimes the heart, wait a minute, you're doing too much for me. That's why the Bible tells us body, bodily exercise, it does profit a little. We have to make sure we watch our heart spiritually and we have to make sure we watch our heart naturally in Jesus' name. Watch what we take in and what we eat it. Eat the right foods in Jesus' name. Don't overindulge in too much of anything. But we got to watch our heart that we do because we need our heart. The heart is very very important. The heart was so important that when God created man during the day of Noah, it said that people were doing so many things that was not right in the sight of God. This is how much your heart meant to you. When God looked about and saw all these things that were going on in the day of Noah, you know what he said? I'm going to destroy all of civilization because their heart is not right. He said, I'm going to destroy all of the civilization. And he did just that. Remember the flood of Noah? The flood came and God destroyed them all. Because Noah found grace in the sight of God. He said, Noah, you build the ark, bring your family in. I'm going to save you. But because people's heart got wicked, because they got so deceitful, God destroyed a whole civilization. And we don't want God to do that to us. We don't want God to say, you know what? Your heart is so hard. Your heart got so much callous around it that nobody can break through it. I'm sending people your way to explain to you, trying to get you to do this, trying to get you to do that. But your heart is so hard that you don't want to listen to anything that they say. We don't want to fall into the hands of an angry God. So God destroyed that whole civilization. But because he looked at Noah, and he found grace. He said, you know what? Never again, never again would I destroy men because, it, because their heart was hard. You know what? I'm going to fix it. That's one thing about the God that we serve. He can fix anything. Is it anything too hard for God? No, there's nothing too hard for God. If you got a heart problem, God can fix your heart. If you got a problem that you can't, your blood not flowing the way you want to fix, God can control the blood flow in Jesus' name. That's the kind of God for He said, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, 
man confesses, confession is made unto salvation. That's Romans 10 and 10. That shows you that if we believe that God can do these things, we open up our mouth, if we believe that God can do it, God is able. The first thing we got to believe that if God said it, it shall come to pass. We got to believe with all of our heart. That's why you got to serve me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul. You got to give it all to me because I'm the one that can control it all. But as time goes on, we see the it says in Proverbs, it says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it, the issues of life. If you want to know what's going on about someone, take some time to listen to them. Take some time to listen to them. You can figure out what is going on with a person if you really, really pay attention to what they're saying. You can figure out what, what is going on in that life. Nobody has to tell you. Listen to them. Because the Bible says, out of the heart flows the issues of life. The longer you talk with a person, the more you find out, okay, I see what's going on right here. I see what they're facing. I see the kind of things they're going through. But out of the heart flows the issue of life. It flows. It gives you what is going on. The heart is very important. That's why we must protect it. Those walls that are in our, that, that, that is around our heart, we can't let anybody just come up to them and start putting stuff on our wall. You go to somebody's house now, you, don't, you just don't say, well, can I hang that on your wall? No, you no, no, no. You don't let anything come into your house. You have to protect your house. You have to protect your heart. You have to protect your mind. You have to protect all of it because the enemy is going to come out and he'll try to give you all of these things. Say, try this. Try that. This ain't too bad. It ain't like, it's all right to do this right here, but we got to realize we have to protect that which God has given us. If you have his spirit down on the inside, you need to do all that you can do to protect that. If he has circumcised your heart, if you have repented of your sin and you've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and he has filled you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, you need to do everything that you can do to protect your heart. Do all that you can do to protect your heart. If you have a if you have an electrical problem in your heart, you you need to make sure you call the correct electrician. Don't go get a jack leg. Don't go get the man that's around the corner that fixes everybody else's house. Well, he can do it. He's been doing it for but is he likely to do it? No, he's not likely, but he's been doing it for years. Same way we can equate that to our spiritual life. Don't go out and take advice from any and everybody. Protect your heart. People are going to tell you what feels good to you and what feels good to them. Because believe it or not, everybody don't want to see you succeed. Everybody, most, a lot of people want to see you. If I'm in the dirt, you get in the dirt with me then. What they said, uh, what's the, the, what's the old, old saying? Uh, misery, love, company. All of that stuff. No, no. If you got an electrical problem, call you a licensed electrician. Call him and say, look, come in and see what's going on. Same way for our spiritual life. You got a problem going to the Bible, tell us to call for the elders of the church. Let them know what's going on. Let them, not that, not that you will, I don't tell that man, I don't tell that woman my situation, block all these type of things, but call for them. God has people in place. Protect your heart at all times. Protect your heart at all times. Don't let in and everything get to your heart. Keep it at, we say, keep it at, 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 at an arm distance. What's the old saying? We like to say, I'm a spoon feed you. Don't let it get too close. But you can't let in and everything get to your heart. You must protect your heart. You must guard your heart. Because if you don't guard your heart, I'm telling you, the enemy, just like he, he, he's told Christ, God when he was up in heaven, he said, I'm going to and fro. Say I'm going to and fro. And once he see that there's a God let down, and he can find any way to get into your chambers, the chambers of your heart, if he can find any way to get in there, I promise you, and say you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. You give him just a little leverage, 
man, he would take the whole thing. All he wanted just baby to get in there. Once you get in there, that's why you got to protect your heart at all costs. Your heart is very important. Your heart is very important. And one thing about the heart, it can also be deceitful if you don't let Christ control it. He said, I will give you the desires of your heart. If you don't let him control your heart, you will be tricked by your heart. The people of Judah, once again, they were going on about their business and they realized, once you read over into Jeremiah, they were going on about their business. They started going in and everything. They once again, through society, that's why we gotta be careful to protect the heart because one thing about it, history, sometimes if we don't watch it, it will repeat itself. If we're not careful, history will repeat itself. They did it before, be, before they were into captivity and when they got into captivity, they started doing any and everything they want to do. Jeremiah told them, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. They started doing any and everything. The Bible said, your heart is deceitful. It is desperately wicked. You want to do all the things you want to do, but nobody wants to do what thus says the Lord. We're doing any and everything, but they let their guards down. They forgot to protect their heart. They forgot to make sure, keep up your shield. How do I keep up the shield? I mean, I got to stay into the word of God. I got to make sure that, that if, 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 the enemy said, you don't have time to do this. I got to make sure that I find some time. Each and every one of us ought to have a time that we say, you know what? This is meditation time. This is the time that I'm giving to God. And we need to hold on to that. We need to be faithful in that. We need to make sure that we don't let our God down and say, you know what? This came up, so I can't get there. I can't do it. But we need to find a time in our day a time during our week, a time sometimes, and Lord, this is for you. I need to put my time in. I need to make sure I give you what it's due unto you. Because if we don't, we will find ourselves lost. We will find ourselves letting our guards down. We will find ourselves letting things come into the chambers of our heart. We thought we had the door closed. But somehow or another, temptation got through. Somehow another envy got through. Somehow another bitterness got through. Somehow another unforgiveness got through. And now we're in a world of trouble because we let our heart not be guarded. We have to govern our speech. As it says here in the lesson, in the, in the, uh, the script, in 24, put away forward mouth. Put away a forward mouth and perverse lips far from thee. We have to make sure that Watch what we say. We have to watch what we say. Because sometimes we can say some things that are not so pleasant. Sometimes we can say some things that will hurt somebody. Sometimes we can say some things that will cause us to have people say, wait a minute, did I really hear you say that, brother? Sometimes we say stuff that we out of anger out of well I'm going to show you who I am but that's why it's good to know what the word of God said it's good to know where your protection is it's good to know where you can come back to and say no Lord I'm, I'm slipping a little bit my heart is, is filled up with some stuff that don't need to be filled up with it. my plumbing ain't working right right now I'm not having a good drainage system right now I need a good flushing I need a good a good cleaning or maybe I didn't need my pipes adjusted. Maybe my valves need to be adjusted a little bit. You get into the word of God. He said, he told the disciples and he brought them all in and he set them down and he said, give me, give me a pan, put some water in it. And he cleaned their feet. He said, now you are clean. He cleaned them through his word. You have to get into the word of God. But when you get a little bit shaky, you get a little bit dirty, you got to find something that can clean you up spiritually. If you don't, you'll find yourself doing any and everything. You'll find yourself flowing with anything that comes across. Somebody say, do this. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. But is it what 
the word of God said. We have to watch our speech. Let not the eyes, let not thine eyes look right on. Let thine eyes look right on. And let thine eyelids look straight forward. We have to guard, guard our sight. We had a um, young man that worked with us. We was at the old camp that we, we, we worked at. And one of his things was, I see, but I don't see. He was telling us that all the time. Look at that pretty woman right there, brother. He said, I see, but I don't see. Look at that right there. I see, but I don't see. We have to guard our eyes. We have to look straight on. Yeah, it's right there in front of me, but I can't let it get to my heart. In the society that we live in now, we have to be extra careful. We have to be extra careful. Everybody is worrying less as possible. Especially for us men, if we be honest with ourselves, we have to be real careful. They, we are worrying less as we can. If we can get away with worrying a two-piece, that's all our work. If we can get away with it. But we have to let our eyes look straight on. Because if we don't, it can easily, it can easily break down. The door may be closed, but if you knock long enough, if you lock not long enough, sooner or later, you're going to get tired of the knocking. You're going to say, who at the door? Let me just see who it is. And all the enemy needs is the opportunity to get in. Once you open up the door, he just said, it's me. And he may start off with something just simple as hello. But hello can turn into a whole lot of different type of things. I had a saying I used to say, I had a, a, a stretch. I had an itch that I had to stretch, but when I stretched it, now that stretch won't stop itching. I did all I did was just stretch the itch one time. Now all of a sudden it just keep on itching. Well, I gotta stretch it one more time. Well, let me stretch it one more time. Next thing I know, I'm just stretching, stretching, stretching. The itch don't never go away. But you gotta have something that can take care of that itch. And that's nothing but the word of God. Guard your step. It said, ponder the paths on your feet and let all thy ways be established. Acknowledge me in all your ways and I will direct your path. If we acknowledge God, Lord, I'm weak. Lord, my doors are not tight as I want them to be. Lord, my electrical work, yeah, I tell you, I, I, I just let everything get to me. I need, I need your help. If you acknowledge him, the Lord help me, help me, help me. But when he's doing, when he's trying to help you, don't resist the help. Don't resist the help. A lot of times we resist the help of the Lord. He would send somebody by our way and say, try this brother, try this sister. And we said, no, nah, that don't work for me. That don't work for me. He is telling you in his word, Go such and such and such and do such and such. A lot of the time, God will send people your way. Naaman. Remember the Naaman that was, that was full of leopard? What did he do? He said, go down there. And all I need you to do is dip into the Jordan. That don't sound right. God will have you to do some things that may not sound right to you. But if you do it in obedience to his word, he will see you through. We have to guard our steps. Watch where you go. Watch where you go. About to walk circumspectly. Always watching. Looking around. Be sober. Be diligent. Be mindful of your surroundings. No, I better not go over there because you got to realize you're not just walking with any kind of two feet. Precious are the feet of them that preach the gospel. You say, well, I don't preach the gospel. I don't worry about it. You know what? If you proclaim God's word, you give them the message. If you have his spirit down on the inside of you, you may not be called a pastor, you may not be called a, a deacon, you may not be called a minister, you may not be called whatever they want to call you. But if you got his spirit down on the inside of you, you are one that God can use. You say, well, why can't he use anybody? He can use anybody he wants to, but he prefer to use you. Remember his disciples? When he was feeding the 5,000, he didn't go get some of the 5,000 to come and head feed. He said, you distribute it. You 12, you distribute it. God wants to use you. That's why you have to protect your heart. 
You have to protect your heart. Don't let callous get around your heart. Don't harden your heart so that God have to have to take a bulldozer to come through to break that callous around your heart. And what do you mean by take a bulldozer? Sometimes he'll let things happen. Situations come upon you. Sometimes scars will be left behind. Sometimes your loved ones may be affected by it. Don't let God have to do all of that to get your attention. Don't let your heart get so hard. You say, well, what kind of God that will let all these? No, he did not let any of this happen. He told you in his word, keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart. Keep it. Keep from all these things that are going on around about it. Don't let it do it to keep something, like I said, to make sure that it don't get away. Keep it from attack. Do all that. Your heart is who you are. Your decision making, the truth, the true you, it directs your thoughts and your emotions. That's what your heart do. The heart is really who you are. Your heart is who you are, so you got to protect that. You got to make sure that nothing get to that. All these precious things that we see in our land, they put them in place in things to protect them. Something that is of great value, they seal it up, they lock it up. If it's of too great of a value, they say, you know what? Not only you can look at it, but to keep you from touching, they put it in all kinds of uh, bulletproof stuff. Make sure that it don't get broken in two. Make sure it don't get away. We got to treat our Holy Ghost the same way. Don't let nothing get to your heart that if it's not of God. How can I do it? How can I do it? Israel found themselves in a bad predicament. We find ourselves sometimes in a bad predicament. But what God wants us to do, he wants to circumcise our heart. He want us to repent of our sins. He want us to say, you know what? I can't do that anymore. My heart has been broken. My heart has been broken in two. My, the walls of my heart have been destroyed. The, my, my electrical part of my vow is not working right. Everything I think is evil. Everything I want to do, I want to get, I want to get vengeance on this. I want to be, I want karma to come back on them like they did on me. I want all these things, but my heart is torn apart. I need someone to put it back together again. And the only one can do that is God himself. Only one can put it back together again is him. He said, I'm going to circumcise the heart. When he wanted to destroy the people, he said, I'm not doing it any longer. I'm going to give them a chance and opportunity. I'm going to send them some judges. I'm going to send them some prophets. I'm going to send them some kings that will help them get themselves back in line. And then I'm going to send some pastors out of my own heart Get these things back in line to help you, to make sure that you can, this time, when you come through, I'm going to circumcise it hard. Cut away the foreskin, all of that evil stuff, all that evil speaking, all that feet quick to run the bloodshed, all of that, I'm going to get you because you got me, all of that stuff, that bitterness, I'm going to take all of that away. I'm going to take all that away and I'm going to give you my spirit. Now, I'm not going to write these on tablets where you can carry it around or you can hang it on your neck, but I'm going to write them on the tables of your heart. I'm going to write these on the tables of your heart. Now I'm going to write out my laws in your heart. You're going to be able to keep them. When you get ready, somebody get ready to come in and want to knock at the door that you say, no, I can't have that come in. You say, nope, I'm home, but you can't come in. When they want to come in and they want to destroy your wall, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. If you got to act like that, you need to go back out. Don't let them get to your heart. You have to protect your heart. That's why he gave us his spirit down on the inside. That when we get ready to slip, the spirit will bring it up. The spirit said, wait a minute. You don't have to do that. You don't have to act like that. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I'll, I'll repay. Don't you worry about it. You do that which is right. And God will see you through. Protect your heart. Protect your heart. And I'm proud to bring it in for a close. No matter what is going on in your life, no matter what is going on in your life, don't let anyone or anything break down the protection of your heart. Don't let no situation come about. 
Don't let him do it. Don't let her do it. Don't let them do it. Don't let anyone break the protection of your heart. If you put your heart in God's hand, that's your protection. That's how you really truly protect your heart. You can do all that you can do, but true protection. The Bible says, unless God protect the house, the watchman just sitting there. The watchman is just sitting there. Oh yeah, he gonna hit, if he see it, he gonna let you know, but what if he don't see it? But if you put your trust in the one that can see everything, that can be everywhere at all times, that knows all things, that can control all things. You put your trust in him, he can protect you. He will protect your heart. But if you don't keep your heart protected, you will find out on the natural side if we don't do that which is right, later on in our lives, we can do all the things that we want to do. And as younger people, man, we can eat this, we can drink that, we can smoke this and we can do all these things. But as you start the age, you're like, man, I wish I hadn't done all of that. It started to catch back up, up with you on the natural side. It started to catch up with you because you didn't do the things to protect your heart. We need to make sure we protect our heart. Don't let anything get so next to your heart that you let your guard down that you put your shield down. You let anything come in, but you gotta be able to no, 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 no. I can't do that, I can't do that. I wanna keep this blood running through my veins that Christ will be able to do the things that he wanna do. I wanna be that country, so when Christ said go, I said here I am, Lord, send me. I wanna be that one, he said, say go over there and lay your hands on your sister and your brother. I wanna be that one that I can go and my heart is pure, my heart is clean. I have a clear conscience that I don't just say, well, I just got up this morning, I did anything I want to do, but I did it that God is pleased with me. Acknowledge him. Treat him just like you would treat anything that you think is precious. You are safeguarded. You put up all kinds of shield. You don't let some of, some of the things we got in our lives, that we got in our possession, you can use anything that you want to use of mine, but you can't use this right here. Well, what do you mean? I, I just no, 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 no. I help you buy one, but you can't use this one. This is only for me. We got to safeguard our hearts in just that way. We have to safeguard our heart. We have to protect our heart at all costs. Because if we don't, the enemy is out. He's looking for a way if I could just get in on, if I could just get in the side of the house, if I could just be the fly on the wall, that's all I want to be right now, just the fly on the walls of your heart. If I can get in there, and then when the fly get in there, does the fly come in your house? Does he stay in just that one room? No, he don't. He go from room to room. And what you say, that fly is getting on my nerve. I just got to get it. I got to get it, but he go from room to room, room to room. Your family just say, I had enough of you. We got to say what that I said. I had enough of trying to do it on my own. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus and watch him do what he do best. He can circumcise that heart. He can, he can give you a heart of flesh that now you starting to feel some things. You say, you know what? I got to clean this up. I got to make this better. And once you did all that you can do, then you say, you know what? I realize I'm not doing anything. I must take it to Jesus. I must take it to Jesus. At all costs, people of God, protect your heart. Protect your heart. It is very, very important. The heart is a major part of your body, major part of your decision making, major part of your everyday life in Jesus' name. Protect your heart. In Jesus' name. We thank God this morning.